Captive State, directed and co-written by Rupert Wyatt, the director of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, takes place in Chicago after an alien race invades Earth. This alien race is much more advanced than humanity is, so humans are forced to surrender. However, many don't give up that easily. The government ensures civilians are compliant and do what the aliens say, but there is an underground resistance growing that wants to fight back. The police are seeking to squash this resistance, but they find out that it's a little more difficult than they anticipated. As humans attempt to cope with alien rule, some embrace it, and others continue to fight back. Alright, so I had seen a few trailers for Captive State in various movies over recent months, and I thought it looked good. I mean, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on YouTube or not, but I do love a good film with aliens in it. For whatever reason, I've always been fascinated by the hypothetical situation of aliens coming to Earth and then seeing how humans respond to it. Either way, Captive State definitely flew under most people's radar, I'd say. I don't think this is a movie a lot of people will see, but regardless, I still hoped it would be, you know, the surprise winner of 2019. I was hoping for it to be like the upgrade of 2019, the film that flew under the radar for most, but turned out to be pretty good. My ultimate hope for it was that it would be the next District 9, but sadly, that didn't end up being a reality. I was pretty underwhelmed with this movie. It's certainly not the worst movie ever made, but it's not very good either. I often felt disengaged with it because there's just not any one element to latch onto, to really connect with. The characters are very undefined and underdeveloped, and the premise of the film is really not explored in a coherent way. I think the two biggest issues I have with this movie that drag it down the most have to do with the writing and pacing. While there are some really good moments, the writing and pacing never quite allow you to connect with the characters or any one element of their play or any element of this movie, like I mentioned, in a satisfying way. The film jumps around from character to character, and there's never a chance to really understand any of them. It's a very basic experience, because all you really know is that some of them support the alien invaders, and some of them want to rebel and start a war. That's basically it. There's a little bit of some family stuff thrown in there, but there's just no depth to it. So the pacing, it's odd. I mean, the best word I can use to describe it is odd. I mean, a lot of the movie is just focused on Ashton Sanders and John Goodman's characters. And then when you begin to gain even the slightest investment in them, the film goes away from them for like 25 minutes. There's like this mission that some rebels go on that you've never met and it's all very, very convoluted and difficult to follow. In the middle of the film, the time where we should be connecting with the characters we've spent time with, we cut away from them and dedicate time to a confusing plot line with characters we know nothing about. It's all, like I mentioned, very unsatisfying. I think the premise of this film is one that I think a lot of people would find interesting, but the way the narrative is constructed and how it's paced just isn't well done. The movie doesn't feel like it's building to anything, it just feels like a collection of things happening rather than a cohesive story. I did like seeing the aliens when they actually maintained somewhat of a presence. I mean, I think the goal here was to limit the audience's exposure to the aliens in an effort to focus on the more human themes of the story. There's themes in there about government tyranny and resistance and other sort of things, and the aliens just don't have a major presence because, you know, they only show up a handful of times, and the film focuses more on the humans and the human themes and that kind of stuff. But when the aliens do show up, I did find them interesting. I just wish that they showed up a little bit more because they look cool and they seem like an interesting part of the film that just isn't explored like, you know, they should be. All you really know is that they're here for resources and not much more than that. There's not a lot to any one aspect of this film and it all feels very unrefined and unfocused and that ultimately leads to an experience that you know, unsurprisingly feels underwhelming and unsatisfying. That said, while I didn't love the characters and how they were written, I thought John Goodman and Ashton Sanders both had their moments. I think they each bring some personality to their characters and they do a serviceable job with the material that they were given, which is pretty subpar. There were times when I felt, you know, disappointed though, because I think very highly of these two. John Goodman has a pretty extensive track record of being a great actor. And while I've only seen Ashton Sanders in Moonlight, he thoroughly impressed me in that film. I think both of them do suffer from poor material, but they do an admirable job elevating the film where they can. The film does throw a few little surprises in there, which was nice, but ultimately this movie, you know, it has a hard time figuring out what it wants to be and what it wants to do. It ends up, you know, as little more than a movie with weak characters, some subpar writing and pacing, and some aliens that rule over humans, and that's honestly about it. There are some positive aspects, but none of them are really refined or focused enough to be worth your time. Let's take a look at the pros cons list as we wrap up. For the pros, I thought Ashton Sanders and John Goodman deliver solid performances here, and the aliens look kind of cool when you actually see them. As for the cons, the characters are very uninspired, the writing itself is poor, the pacing is a mess, and there's not much payoff for anything that happens. I'm gonna give Captive State a 4.5 out of 10 and recommend you pass on this one altogether. 
I don't think it's worth the price of admission or even a rental for that matter. It's just a total misfire. So if you guys happen to watch Captive State, please make sure to let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. I'd be surprised if many people actually saw it, but you never know. I also wanna let you guys know that I'm working on the Will Foxification Movie Awards and they should be out sometime soon. Honestly, my schedule has prevented me from finishing it as quickly as I would like. It should be out sometime soon though, so be on the lookout for that. Either way, this is Will Foxification signing off. See you in the next review.